Hey guys, Laura Garicki, G-Force Athletics. Today we've got a 20 minute upper body session and we're going to sneak in a little core work while we're at it. So you go grab a couple of sets of light to medium dumbbells and I'll see you in a minute. So a little brief description of how today's session is going to go. We have five activities, but we're going to split them in half so we work on one arm at a time. They're all upper body activities, so it'll actually be ten activities that we will repeat twice. Um, each activity is going to be 50 seconds on with a 10 second break in between, so we're going to go 20 minutes. Each activity is also going to be standing in a staggered stance position. So for example, your right foot will be in front and your left foot will be behind, your both toes face forward. You're not like, you're not like this, okay? We're not really challenging your balance. So it's a staggered stance. Um, both feet are, you know, kind of parallel, but staggered. And you, we're going to work the arm that's on the same side of the front leg. That's where you get the sneaky core work comes in because you're going to have to, your core is going to have to work harder to keep your hips stable. So we're getting a little core work in there. Um, you're not going to feel it, but it is certainly working on core and hip stability. So the first thing we're going to do, grab, um, if you've got two sets of dumbbells, one heavier and one lighter, grab the heavier because the first um, first activity we're going to do are shoulder presses. And we'll, we'll start with the right arm, then we'll do the left, then we'll do, move into the next activity. All right, so grab those dumbbells. I'm going to grab mine and start the timer. Now remember, go ahead and step, start, uh, press your right foot forward, your left foot back. Both hip toes are facing forward, and you, your arms are in a shoulder press position, and you're just going to press with the right arm. So this first set, we'll do the right arm first, and then the left, and then we'll repeat all these activities. We'll do the left and then the right. This will take some brain, um, uh, this will take a lot of thought as well, because you want to keep that left arm up. So in all of these moves, while you're working one arm, the other arm is going to have to hold a dumbbell in a certain position. So you're still targeting those muscles. So one arm is not moving and one is. And in many of these cases, the non-moving arm is going to feel more fatigued than the moving arm. Alright, switch feet. Left foot in front, right foot in back, both feet face forward. Get in that press position. This time hold your right arm still and then press with your left. Alright, now sometimes if I'm not paying attention, I'll start dropping that arm. So make sure you glance over there. So control your press motion with your left arm. And make sure your right arm stays in that 90 degree angle. Also keep your muscles in your neck and your shoulders relaxed, as relaxed as possible. So if you start to feel a little neck strain, you might want to lighten the load. All right, good. I can tell that right arm is kind of dropping a little bit. All right, very good. I think I'm going to switch my weights out and do a curl to extension. So right foot front, I'm going to demonstrate from the side. You know, bend over a little bit. We'll start with the right arm. So have your left arm bent and away from your body, and you're just going to go curl to extend. Let me show you from this side. A bicep curl, tricep extension. Curl, extension. Curl, extension. Your left arm should be bent and away from your body and not moving, but just holding that dumbbell. From the front. Okay. I went lighter just because the triceps are a little weaker than the biceps, so I didn't want to fatigue them out too quick. All right, let's switch. I'm not sure if you can hear the timer over there, but we are doing 50 seconds on, 10 seconds off. All right, so hold that right arm out and bent just a little bit. Curl extension curl extension yeah 
have to use your brain a little bit. Keep that right arm out. Now also, let me remind you, we're sneaking in a core workout too. So while you're doing this, keep those hips facing forward. So you want to avoid you know, doing any of this. All right, keep, the, keep that core tight. Your hips should be facing the same direction as your feet. That's why you want your feet facing forward so they can kind of be a guide for your hip bones. Oops, I'm starting to drop my right arm. Sorry about that. Let me cut that up if you, if you can't hear that over here. Okay, going to go to a fly. So I'm going to keep these five pounds. Right foot in front. Left arm is to the side and bent. And you're going to fly with your right arm. Remember to keep your core tight. Keep your hips facing forward. And keep your head or your neck and your shoulder muscles relaxed. Try not to tense up. If you feel like your weight is too heavy, it may make you tense up in your neck, especially in your neck muscles when you're doing the fly. Remember to keep your left arm out to the side and slightly bent. One more. All right, we're going to switch. Whew. Shake it out. Because now you have to hold that right arm still while you do a fly with the left arm. So your right arm is going to get fatigued holding that dumbbell still. Alright, ready? Slight bend in your elbow and fly. Fly like an eagle to the sea. Alright, enough singing. I don't sing very well. Sorry. Alright, remember to keep that dumbbell out. A lot of brain work here. Your brain is like a muscle, so when you exercise, you're working it too. It gets stronger, just like your muscles do. Keep those hips square. Keep that core working. You're kind of tricking your core into working today. Well, whew, those were hard to do. All right, I'm going to go a little heavier. For rows, show you from the side again, right foot in front, left foot behind. You're going to bend over at the waist and row. So get that elbow high up behind you. Your left arm is away from your body to the side, holding that dumbbell still. You're not moving your left arm. So here's your row. Watch your hips. Watch that hip shift. Don't allow your hips to turn. Let me show you from the front how I'm holding this left dumbbell out to the side and doing that rowing motion with my right arm. Slight bend in the waist. Make sure you're not leaning all the way over here. It's just a slight bend. All right. Left side, so left foot in front, right foot behind, slight, slight bend in your knees, slight bend at the waist, hold that right dumbbell over here, and row with your left arm. Get that elbow up there, up and behind, keep it close to your waist, you've already done your flies, so you don't want to do flies anymore, these are rows. And it's easy to drop that dumbbell that you're holding still, so watch that too. A lot of things to think about. <laughs> if you catch yourself dropping that dumbbell, just, just raise it back up. The one that you're supposed to be holding still. All right. I'm going to go a little bit lighter for these. We're going to do interior arm raises or front arm raises. So again, we'll lead with the right. So right foot in front, left foot behind. Hold the left dumbbell just kind of in front of you, but away from your body. And do front arm raises. 
you want to stop about chin level. You don't want to go way up here. It's not a swing, it's a raise. So when you go into your boss's office and you ask for a raise, take a dumbbell in there and say, hey boss, I want a raise. Take a heavy dumbbell too. Tell your boss, I said you deserve a raise. Because you work hard. You work hard all day. And then you train to make your body work hard. So you're a healthy person and you're a healthy employee. So you're a very productive employee. Healthy employees are productive employees. All right, so let's switch. Left foot in front. Hold that right dumbbell and just in front and away from your body. And you're going to raise with your left arm only. And this is the fifth activity or the tenth activity. However you're counting. There's only five activities, but we're splitting it up in half because we're doing one side at a time. So actually there's ten. So... We'll take a short water break after this, and then we'll repeat the sequence. Remember to keep your core tight. Keep those hips facing forward. Not a swing, but a raise. Do one more. Excellent. All right, grab a sip of water if you're sweating. Uh, wipe the sweat off your hands, your face, off your dumbbells. See you in a few seconds. Okay, round two. Let's go. Left foot in front, right foot behind. Every extra, every activity, we're going to lead with the left instead of the right. So we're going to press with that left arm. Hold the right arm in a 90 degree. Um, position, hold it still, and press up and pull down with that left arm. You may feel a little fatigue because you just did 10 minutes of this. I know, I'm feeling a little fatigued. I'll tell you a little secret in a minute why I'm so fatigued. I just don't want to talk about it right now. Watch your neck muscles and your shoulder muscles. Whoops, watch that arm. Don't let it drop. Lots to think about. Oh, one more press. All right, drop those arms. Give them a little 10 second respite. Right foot in front, left foot behind. Both feet face forward, hips face forward. Ready, arms up. Hold your left arm stable while you press up and pull down with that right arm. Good job. Your left arm is probably fatigued just holding that dumbbell. Sometimes I call it a damn bell. Steady. Especially after doing all those presses. Breathe. Watch your form. Keep your neck relaxed. So try not to tense up. Do you need to drop? Oh, I do need to drop for just a second need to drop that's okay feel the burn but don't let it burn too much right ah wow okay I'm going to drop down and do curl to extension we're gonna lead with the left foot and the left arm okay remember hold this dumbbell out curl and extend curl extension curl extension this dumbbell in the right hand just stays out and away from the body Curl, extend. Here's from the side. Curl, extend. Curl, extend. Get it up there. Curl, extend. And we're going to watch that right arm. Make sure it's out, away from your body. Holding that dumbbell. So it's still getting a little bit of work in too. Keep your hips square and face forward. Now I'll switch to the right foot being in front, left foot and back. Both feet are facing forward. You don't want to do this, okay? All right, 
left arm stays still this time, curl to press. I mean, I'm sorry, curl to extension. Curl to extension. Curl, extension. Curl, extension. Really dig into those triceps. Curl, go up there. Curl. The lighter the weight, the greater the range of motion you should have in these curls to extension because here you're getting a little bit of momentum to go into that extension. Remember to keep this left dumbbell away from your body so you're still working those muscles in that left arm. Curl extension. Let's do one more. All right, then we'll move back up. And no, actually, I'm not. I forgot flies are next. Then I'll move back up. All right, left foot in front. Hold that right arm out, bent to the side, and then fly with that left arm. There's a slight bend in your arm as you fly. This is not a raise, it's a fly, okay? So, like a butterfly, flapping your little wings in the springtime drinking the nectar. So just think those pretty little thoughts while you're doing this. Okay. Oh, wow. Keep that right arm out. Slight bend in your elbow. All right. Whew, shake it out. Right foot in front, left foot behind. This time you keep your left arm out and slightly bent. Fly with that right arm. Pull that dumbbell up. Pretend there's a string attached to your thigh and you're just pulling it up. Like you're a, one of those talking dolls that has the strings. Is anybody old enough to remember those? Or do they still make those? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you pull the string and it says, My name is Tammy. So, or my name is Chucky. Anyway, just get that arm up there. Keep it slightly bent so you target the intended muscles. We're not doing a raise, we're doing a fly. Next we'll come lat rows, then we'll finish off with the, an arm raise. So I'm gonna go back up in my weights for the last two sets, or the last two activities, row, lead with the left, keep that right dumbbell out and away from your body, and row with your left arm. Your elbow and your hand, your whole arm actually stays close to your body, okay, so you're not going out, you're going up and back, targeting your lower back, your lats. Remember to keep this dumbbell elevated, the right dumbbell, keep it elevated and away from your body. So don't just let it hang there, all right? Keep it out here. Work those muscles. Remember, you're deceptively working your core, so keep, those, keep your core tight. Keep your hips facing forward. Oh, okay, switch feet, right foot in front. Now this time your left hand, don't let it just dangle, okay? Hold that away. Hold that with some purpose there. Like you're trying to keep one dumbbell away from the other. So you're rowing with your right arm, keeping that left arm just slightly bent and away from your body. So hold that dumbbell up. Make those muscles still work, continue to work, even though you're not moving your arm. It's a lot to think about. I see myself starting to drop. So you got to really watch your form. Monitor your form with your right arm. And then watch what that left arm is doing. It's trying to sneak its way down there. So it's not having to work so hard. One more. All right. Okay, we're gonna do arm raises. I think I'll just keep these since this is the last activity. Left foot in front, right foot behind. 
keep the right dumbbell out to the side and away from your body and then just raise up and lower down I don't know why I went up and wait for this last round I just like a good challenge sometimes okay remember to keep your hips square so none of this don't be turning make sure those feet are facing forward because if that, if that back foot is this way, your form, you're going to sacrifice your form. All right? Raise and lower. Not a swing. You're not using your hips for momentum. It's all upper body. And then sneaking in a little core work while you keep your hips stable. This is very good for your upper body, for your back and for your hips. Hip stability is always good. Helps with your posture and helps with your balance. So if you do some balance activities, your hips will appreciate all that stability you've been training them to do. All right, keep this left arm up and away from your body. Doesn't need to be way up here. Just a slight, slight lift with the left arm as you raise and lower with the right. And this is your very last activity. So now I'll tell you my secret. This is actually the second taping of this session because the first time the recorder wasn't on. So I gave myself about a 20 minute break and then came back down to re-record. So that's why I'm feeling just a little extra fatigue right now. But you know what? It's all good. I got 40 minutes in, not 20. That's, I'm, I'm happy with that. All right. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have an amazing day. And I will see you soon.